Throughout this week, to prepare for Pentecost, I've been going through a series on the Holy Spirit called The Wild Goose by Father Tave Pavanka, and he titles it The Wild Goose because this is actually a name that Celtic Christians, so those living on the British Isles like Ireland, Scotland, a name that they would actually give to the Holy Spirit. See, we often might think of the Holy Spirit as like a dove, so it's gentle, calm, peaceful. But for the Celtic Christians, those in Ireland say, they actually would say that the Holy Spirit was like a wild goose. It was unpredictable, surprising, full of adventure, making squawking sounds and stuff like that. And so whenever they experience the Holy Spirit at work in their lives in these surprising, adventurous, unexpected ways, they would say to each other, the goose is loose. The goose is loose. And if we read today's first reading, we actually see that it's a lot like a wild goose entering in to the apostles' lives. We heard the words suddenly and rushed and violent explaining how the Holy Spirit came to them. And then the crowd's reaction, bewildered, amazed, astonished, perplexed. So on Pentecost, the first time the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles, it was not really like a dove in any way. It was not comfortable or tidy or neat or peaceful. No, it was quite the opposite. It was something very surprising, unexpected, adventurous. And I remember the first time I experienced the Holy Spirit in my life in a real way. It was about 10 years ago, to this day, pretty close. And so I had just had that confession experience where I just poured out five years of this debaucherous lifestyle to this priest. I felt freedom and and peace in my heart. And then I went to communion that Sunday, and it was the first time I knew for certain I was not receiving bread, I was receiving Jesus. A real person entered into my heart. And I went home, and my parents are preparing lunch, and I'm in my room by myself. And suddenly I come face to face with my fears. Just as the apostles in today's gospel had these fears, I suddenly came face to face with a fear of going back to my former way of life. Suddenly the thought of watching pornography came to my mind. And it was like this fear of going back to my former way of life suddenly came face to face with me. And we heard about this in today's second reading. St. Paul talks about a war happening between the flesh and the spirit. And if you read the, the description of what are the works of the flesh, this war that the flesh wants to wage against us, the first word St. Paul uses is fornication. If you read the original Greek, the word is porneia. That's where we get the word pornography from. And so in a real way, I felt this fear of falling into the work of the flesh, falling into my former way of life, falling into pornography. And I felt Jesus saying to me in the moment, like, what do you want? Choose. Me or this? I felt Jesus inviting me to a new life. And as soon as I said yes... I felt like something turned on inside of me. I felt like something was set loose. And I remember so clearly, like, I literally ran downstairs. And I told my parents that my life is changed forever. Think back to the word, the words used in today's first reading, like, suddenly, rushed. And then the reaction of my parents, bewildered, perplexed, amazed, astonished, That was certainly true in my case. So I felt like the Holy Spirit on that day, about 10 years ago on a Sunday, was like the wild goose in my life. And the the goose was loose. And so in so many unpredictable, unexpected ways, I did so much stuff I never thought I would do in my whole life. And one of the key things that I was called to do, I felt the Holy Spirit, the wild goose, he was like squawking, making these sounds, calling out people's names, people that I had to call or text and reach out to and ask for forgiveness. And I felt like I went through the list of absolutely everyone. It was like 20 to 30 people I probably had to call and ask 
for forgiveness, apologize for the ways that I was just a fool and hurt them in, in a lot of ways. And so my life was seriously like an adventure. But far too often since that day of great adventure, I feel like my life is different. I'm more like kind of domesticated the wild goose. More, he's almost more like a stuffed animal or even kind of those stuffed animals that you forget about, you don't really know that are there. I felt like that's the Holy Spirit so often in my life, like just forgotten about him. He's not really someone alive and active in my life. And so often when I feel those promptings of the Holy Spirit to like do something unexpected, go on an adventure, I just kind of push it aside and, and say no. And I can get so comfortable uh, with my routine. So comfortable with my routine. Or instead of the adventures that the Holy Spirit invites me on, I seek adventure in other ways. So instead of like the holy adventures of wanting to become a saint, I just seek false adventures. And I was praying about it, okay, what are the false adventures that I seek that are not from God, that are more from myself? The false adventures of the world. So when I feel like my greatest adventure as I shared earlier, it might be going on a website that I shouldn't. Something needs to change. Or when my greatest adventure might be like the next restaurant I want to go to, when that's the greatest adventure, trying to find food, something needs to change in my life. Or endlessly scrolling through Facebook or Instagram until I might get scandalized by some post. Or trying to find some amazing deals online, online shopping. If that's the greatest adventure I'm seeking, something needs to change. Or for the majority of my college years, trying out different drugs, trying to feel a rush or a buzz. These are five false ways that I've sought adventure in my life. And you might experience the same thing in your life. There's no shame in it, but with reverence and respect, like I want to invite you and myself to actually go on an adventure, to allow the Holy Spirit to not be some stuffed animal that we just put aside and forget about and has no influence in our lives, but to actually be like a wild goose, to be set loose in our life, to lead us on an adventure. Because deep in the heart of every man and every woman is the desire for an adventure. Every man wants to lead on an adventure, and every woman wants to be caught up in a great adventure. And so I'd like to invite every single one of us to actually embark upon an adventure. So this week, I wanted to do it. I was tired with being too comfortable And so I went through this video series by Father Dave Pavanka called The Wild Goose. You can check it out on the Formed website. And throughout the entire week, I've been begging the Holy Spirit constantly for an adventure. And I've been using the words, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit. I've been saying it probably thousands of times this week. So last night, after dinner, uh, feeling like I just wanted to relax, it was a long day, so sit down, but then I kind of felt, it's like, go to the chapel, go to the chapel, go to the chapel, so I'm fine, go to the chapel, and then just go to the chapel, and it's like, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, and then the name just pops up, Jeff Costin, this name, Jeff Costin. So about a month ago, I was working with Jake Kim on my emotional inventory, so going through my past, and it became very clear that Jeff Costin, who was the last serious golf coach I had, I had actually blamed him so much for my failures in golf. I'd I'd put the blame on this man, who was my last golf coach, as though he was the real reason I failed in golf. And it became really clear working with Jake that, okay, I've, I've made him like the scapegoat to escape personal responsibility for the ways that I failed in my golf game, and I put all the blame on him. And he was actually, someone that I never reached out to when I had my conversion among the 20 to 30 people I called. I never really thought I needed to tell him this. So last night, I'm in the chapel, late last night, 
Jeff Costin, Jeff Costin, like, ah, fine. And I find his cell phone and uh, I called him. It had been over 13 years since I had spoken to him. And I said, hey, Jeff, it's Richard Conlon. Do you remember me? And he did. And I said, I just need to uh, apologize. I've blamed you so often in my life for my failures in golf. And it led to quite an amazing conversation. And uh, as soon as I hung up, I felt this to like burst of joy. It was like I felt like crying and also laughing at the same time. And uh, I still woke up this morning with like a smile on my face. And that was a sign of the Holy Spirit. Because we heard in today's second reading that the fruits of the Holy Spirit, one of them is joy, like true joy. And whenever we're led by the Holy Spirit, as St. Paul says, we're called to be guided and led by the Holy Spirit. One of the fruits, one of the results of a life led by the Holy Spirit is joy. And so I experienced it last night. The goose was set loose in my life. And so I just want to invite everyone there, out there, myself included, to go on an adventure. The Holy Spirit is not meant to be a stuffed animal you just put aside in your closet and forget about. The Holy Spirit wants to be a wild goose. He wants to be set loose in your life. He wants to lead you on an adventure. And here's something so cool that I realized. Every adventure that the Holy Spirit leads you on leads to joy. Every adventure the Holy Spirit leads you on results in joy. And so I experienced it in my life. Whenever you read the lives of the saints, you see an adventure. Adventure is one of the key marks of their life. They're led by the Holy Spirit in the most unexpected and surprising of ways. And so one of the practical ways that we can do this, okay, the Wild Goose series. It's on the Formed website. Father Dave Pavanka, really easy way just to watch these series, but don't just watch it. Pray through it. Expect Father Dave to speak to you, to lead you on an adventure. And then just say these prayer, this prayer constantly. You could say it hundreds of times per day. Come, Holy Spirit. You can even add little phrases after. Come, Holy Spirit, set the goose loose in my life. Whatever it might be. We need the Holy Spirit to no longer be the stuffed animal that we set aside. We want it to be set loose, to lead us on an adventure, an adventure that always leads to joy.